count it. We open last session. So what we discussed in the last session, let us open that and see. Okay. We were using in this for loop. Okay, then here we find the abbreviation of the given sentence. Also, whether the given word is a palindrome or not, we find. Okay, we are going to find in that manner. Okay, so today I try to show another application. So using for loop, we try to find, we try to find how many times a character is getting repeated in the given string. So how many times the character is appearing, we try to find using a for loop. Okay, we can use for loop with the help of that, we try to find how many times each and every character is appearing in the given string. Okay, so but how to do that? Or else shall I give this assignment to you like assignment, will you do it? You just try to do it, this one. Okay, we enter a sentence. In that sentence, suppose we enter certain characters. How many times each and every character is getting repeated in the given string? We should not find. We should find. We need to find here how many times each and every character is getting repeated using the for loop. You can take as assignment and you can do. If you cannot do, I'll explain you in next session, but try to do that. Okay, suppose you have like known. The given sentence is known. In the case of known, it has to print n two times. Similarly, o two times. If you enter moon, m one time, o two times, and n one time, like that it has to print. You need to write code to find how many times each and every character is getting repeated. Okay. So today we discuss about actually like for each loop. Okay, also we work with the environment class. Okay, there is a class called environment. So using environment class, we can find information related to environment, hardware as well as the software of the given system, we can find. So it is a class which is available in the system namespace. So it is a environment class. Okay, we use here environment class with the help of that, we try to find here. Okay, so how many processors we have in the given computer? Okay, then similarly, whether this is a 60 bit pro 64 bit processor. Okay, what is the domain name if it's in network? Similarly, many other things we can find with the help of the environment class. Then later on, we can be using the like for each loop with the help of for the environment. Okay, now try to write here a program with the help of that we try to find environment information, both hardware and software information. So add here one more class. So this is a new item. Then here class. environment info 
is the name of the class which has extension of .cs. So this is public. Then here, I go with the main method again, public, then static, void, main. This is a string array. We call this as apps, followed by here, we write the actual code. This is going to be the starting point of the application. So let us make this particular environment info as the starting class in the project, current project. So we go to this then startup object. Here it is. Environment info. Save this here, then try to write the code. Very first thing is what we need to find here, environment information. So here write INT and processors equal to, I go with the environment dot, I have written this as processor count. How many processors are in this, I can find here. How many number of processors we have in this, we can find. Okay, similarly, bool is 64 bit. This equal to I write environment dot followed by I'll go with this, then here I can find is 64 bit operating system. Okay, I go with this. Whether this is the current 64 bit process or 32 bit process, this can give information. Okay, bool similarly is 64 bit OS. So this equal to we write environment dot then here we write E64 bit operating system. Let us print these values. So go here and type console dot write line. Then write number of cores, oblique processors equal to here zero argument, then slash n. Okay. Is current current process is sixty four bit process. The current app. Here we go with the one followed by slash n. Then here we go with the is 64 bit OS. It's equal to here, second argument we take, then go with comma, and here in the next line, try to do this. First thing is N processors, right? Followed by here it is, is 64 bit, comma, is 64 bit. Oh, yes. So we try to find that information. So this computer, how many processors it is having, you can find with the help of the environment dot processor count. It says here number of cores oblique processors equal to 12. Okay, so this is 12 core computer e 64 bit process the current app through e 64 64 bit os through this is 
Okay, it's a 64 bit operating system, and the current process is also 64 bit process. Number of cores and processors equal to how much it is? 12. So, number of cores is going to be here 12. So, total 12 processors we find in this. Okay, try to find here what is the name of the processor, whether we can print it or not. Let us check. We go here with the environment dot followed by can we get the processor name let us see process id we have processor count we have okay so like OS version you can find here. Okay. So version, working set, username. Who is the user I can find now in this? Similarly, here you can go with the set of environment variables. You, you can find here set of environment variables here. Get environment variables. So this is giving us exactly it's giving us actually dictionary. So it is giving us dictionary. So you can find here complete environment variables in this. We can iterate over it with the help of the for each loop. Okay, how many logical drives we have in this? We can find machine name also we can find here in this case. Let us try to find both machine names and here the username. Okay. We go with the machine name as well as username. String str m name, that means machine name, equal to here environment dot. It is machine name. So this is giving us string. Similarly, string u name equal to, we write this environment dot followed by username. You can find even here username. This is related to environment class. Okay, this provides information about the environment and platform, current environment. Okay, so it gives information about the operating system Similarly, other information related to environment it can give us. Similarly, you can find here current working directory. String, right, CWD, this is called as current working directory. So this is equal to environment dot current working directory. So where exactly we are working, we can find. So this information you can find with the help of the environment class. Here you can similarly go and here in this case I have a comma, comma is not required. So next I go with the same thing but this time I change slightly this one. First thing is machine name. Okay, machine name or name of the machine. Next thing is username. Currently who logged in, that username also we need to get here. Next thing after that, working directory. Current working directory, it has to give us. working directory. Not there actually, sorry. It's not there. I need to put here current working directory. Now here, print, first thing is strm name. 
machine name. The next thing here, you name we take username. Then we take CWD current working directory. Now here print. So machine name is what here? Desktop MQV 79 DP. Username is Shemant here. And current working directory is what? Console app1 bin debug net 7.0. Like this, this is giving actually current working directory. Current working directory meaning is what? Where your exe file is running. That path you can find with the help of the environment.current working directory. So using that, you can get that information. All this information is related to system here. Okay. Similarly, we can find here OS. What is the OS we are using? Even you can find that. String OS equal to environment dot followed by you can go here with the operating system. OS version. With the help of this, you can find here what is the OS is used. Okay, this returns actually, it is going to return operating system. So name it as operating system. It's a class. So we are getting operating system information. So what are the features available in this? Let us see in the operating system. So this one is a class. If you go with the OS dot, in such cases, you can find here platform, you can find service pack, you can find version string, you can find actually version information. Okay. So all this information you can find with this. Okay. So version string and everything you can find here. Try to go with the platform on all the things. Write console dot write line here OS name. Okay, then here zero we take, then here write OS dot platform. Okay, dot followed by, you can go here with the two string. Okay, console dot right line in the same manner. What is the next thing we have when you go with the OS version? So here in this case, certain other information is also available for us. What is that? So here we go with the OS dot version is one thing. Service pack is another one. We try to use both in that. Service pack as well as here version. Right. OS service pack. Okay, equal to here. We go with the zero again. Here also we go with zero. And here we give this one as OS dot service pack. Service pack is returning a string for us. It is returning a string. So using get mechanism, we are getting it. Then here we go with the OS version. We print OS version. Here it is OS dot version. Version dot followed by here. Whether it is major version or build version or revision, we just go with the two string and you can find here all the information related to it. Try to run this. You can find here a lot of information related to system. OS name is what here? Win32NT. 
Okay, service pack is nothing actually we are getting in this case. OS version is 10.0, we have like this. So when you go with the service pack, it's not printing anything. OS dot service pack, okay, it's a string, but nothing is actually getting returned in this case. When I go here with the service pack, I, it's nothing is getting printed. OS version, I did not, uh, I mean, install any service pack. But when you go with the version, so version it's giving as version 10. You can find here, Windows 10 version that is. Okay, we have here Windows 10 version. Like this, you are getting actually information related to the computer hardware, computer name, username, who logged in, current working directory where right now application is running, and what is the operating system it's using, what is the service pack applied to this, and what is the operating system version, all this information we are getting. We are getting all this information in this. Okay, do we have any other information also? Let us try to see in this. Okay, if you go with the environment here, what other things are available? Let us check. Dot followed by. Okay, exit, exit code, tick count, command line, when you go with the command line. Okay, gets the command line for this process. Okay, so equals exit current directory. Okay, so like this, how many logical drives are available in this you can find here. Okay, so how many logical drives are available in this it can give us. So many other things actually you can find from this. Okay, you can find many other information as well as from this. Okay, so this is basically what environment. So few features we are using in this. We are using only few features from this application here. Okay, so this is what in the part of system class, it is environment, uh, part of actual system namespace, it's environment. This is having here complete 16, uh, 12 processors. It's 12 core. Okay, but processor is actually Ryzen processor. This is. It's not actually Intel processor. It's a Ryzen processor from the AMD. Okay, so American Mega uh, something you have information. So it is M AMD processor. Okay, and Ryzen processor. This is this is running. This runs very fast. Number of processors are going to be here twelve. Then this is sixty-four bit process. It's correct. This application is sixty-four bit process application. And this is a 64-bit operating system, and you're getting machine name, username, current directory, and apart from that, we get even other information. So this is called as here environment class. We call this as environment class. Okay, now next thing is, we try to find here logical drives. How many logical drives we have? Let us try to print environment dot here. We go with the logical get logical drives. This is giving us a string array. Okay, let us go here and get a string array. Write this as logical drives equal to environment dot get logical drives. Let us iterate over the array and try to find here total how many drives we have in this. Okay, here go with the not for loop, but we go with for each loop here. For each where LD in, we go with the local drives. Okay, this is dynamic variable. Using where keyword you can declare and it's going to retrieve one by one value from the logical drives. Okay, so you can use for each loop with the arrays. You can use with the arrays and you can use with the like collections. We haven't discussed so far about collections. We discuss about later about the collections. So for each loop is going to be here working with the collections in this. Okay, it can work with the collections as well, but initially we are trying to work with the arrays in this. Then here, go with this, try to print. I want to print here the name of the drive here. 
console dot here right line followed by just put zero here right drive name followed by we go with the parameter zero and here ld dot ld is nothing but here logical drive do we have any name for this? Let us check. Okay. LD is nothing but here logical drive for us. LD dot. It's already a string. So just go with the LD. Try to print in this what drive names it prints for us. Debug, then start debugging in this. So it says here C drive and G drive. It's saying here both C and G drives in this. C is here a drive which is SSD. G is actually magnetic drive. So normal hard disk it is, but this is SSD, C is. Like this, this is printing here two drives, C drive as well as G drive. But if you add one more drive, even that can be here shown for us. Suppose you go with some USB, it can show even the drive. Dynamically, it can actually enumerate for us. You can enumerate for us dynamically. Let me add here one more drive and see what it shows in that case. Okay, I added here another drive. I added here one more drive, but that is not actually getting reflected. I don't know what's the reason, but not getting actually reflected that particular thing here. Okay, it's not getting reflected. I'll try with the another drive. Probably that can work. So it is a pen drive. Okay, let us see whether in the OI, uh, this uh, drives list, whether it's shown or not. It's not showing. Go with this and try to see again what are the drives available. Even this is not getting actually I mean, select it. They might be taking time to charge or something. So because of that, they are not actually getting accepted immediately. Let me try here with one more drive. Okay, this should work. Okay, now one more drive is selected here. It is F drive. Fine, so it is automatically, I can pause this here then using application. Once again, I try to run this and what it shows, see in this now. It's not showing anything. Uh, yeah, it's showing here. Drive name, this is D here. The drive is what here? D drive, one more drive is also here selected. Okay, 
So using get logical drives with the help of that, we can find here the drives information. Like a string array, it is returning and using here Okay, so using here, so using for each loop, we are iterating over the collection. So this is giving us string array, get logical drives, it's giving string array. So using here, this for each loop, we are iterating over the array of the strings, one by one we are retrieving and we are printing here. So this is a for each loop. Something similar to for, but in the case of for, you need to use some index. Okay, then you need to have a counter, then followed by you need to increment or decrement the counter like that we write the code. But here what we do, so just we don't write anything. Every item is actually going to be uh, here fetched like this. We are iterating over the given collection here. Over the logical drives we are iterating, one by one item is actually retrieved and the name of that is getting displayed here. So this is called as for each loop. This can work with the collections as well as with the arrays. With both of them, this is going to be working for us. Okay, you can use for each loop and other one is here. You can go with the, uh, like here, uh, you, you, can, you can go with the for loop. And there is one more loop, whether that works or not, let us see here, parallel dot. Here, I go with the for each, Okay, for each here in this case, I'll go here with the string array. I go here with the string simply. Mm, okay. We'll discuss about later on about the other bytes. With the for each loop, we can discuss about later on. Otherwise, I can just actually use the for each loop here in this manner. This is parallel. Okay, so why we use parallel, we discuss about it. So what I do in this case, syntax slightly changes for this. Okay, I can write here, followed by, I'll go here with the, first of all, the collection. Collection is what here for us, logical drives. Comma, followed by here, LD, goes. Here we write an anonymous method. We are going to be writing an anonymous method using actually here lambda syntax. We are going to use here lambda syntax with the help of that we try to print it. So here what we do, we can write here, then here we need to close it and inside this you need to print. Write console dot. Okay, right line. Then here in this, just go with the LD. LD can be printed here. Let's try to run and how this works, see now in this. Okay, 
So C and G are printed. Next G and C are printed. G and C are getting printed. So this doesn't give actually correct idea of what is exactly parallel loop. Okay, here I go with the, here I try to go with array of numbers. ILT nums equal to here, right, 10, 45, 67, 33, 99, 12, okay, 89, then similarly, 43, then 9, 17, 23, 78, 11, 3, then 6, then 2, then 79. Like this, I am going to be using certain number of elements in this. Okay. Here we go with the for each and with the for loop, let us see. Right here, console dot, right line. Here we write usage of for each and parallel dot for each. So this is called as basically parallel computing. What is parallel computing? You should have idea if you ha if you studied actually, like if you have computer science background, then you should know what is parallel computing. You have parallel processors one subject. Okay. So it is right line. Then here we try to just separate the above thing with this. Okay, this is an array, int nums. Try to print actually using for each loop. Okay, first here we go with the for each int n in this is nums. Then here write print n. We are printing here. Sorry, not print. I should write here console dot right line console dot followed by here not right line just go with the right here okay take like this here zero after that we give two spaces then try to print here n then after that console dot right line here we go with this slash n, then separate this line here. Then after that, we go with the parallel dot for each. Parallel dot, here we go with the for each. Okay, and in this case here, first nums, n goes to here. I can write this way. Same thing we try to write here. So what difference you find between them? See here in this. So what is happening in this case? 10, 45, 67, 33, 99, 12, 89, 43, 9, 17, 23, 78, 11, 3, 6, 2, 7, 9, like this you are getting. But when you go with this, you are not getting in the same order here. First 10 you are getting, then 99 you are getting, then followed by 12 you are getting, then 89 you are getting. So like this, the order is changing here in this. Order is not same. Order is actually changing for us here. We don't maintain actually same order in this. Why it is happening like this? Okay, and how much time first processor is taking and how much time second processor is taking, let us try to find in this. We can find the time, how much each and every has taken in this. Okay, so before the for loop and after for loop, what is the time it is printing? Let us see. Console dot, right line. Okay, here followed by zero, 
then here it is date time dot now then dot to string okay so here we go with the ms milliseconds how many milliseconds it is taking and how many we have after this okay in the same manner we take again try to print here milliseconds and here also let us try to print milliseconds it's milliseconds or not if there is any error it gives for us error let us try to run that okay it says 4921 here also it says 4921 you cannot actually see the difference here okay you cannot find here the difference but definitely what is happening here in the first example one and only one processor actually is iterating over the given collection when you go here whenever you go here only one processor actually use it but when you go here multiple processors are actually working on this okay multiple processors are working so this is called as here parallel computing when you go with the first one with the for each what is happening we are using only one processor in that we have 12 processors or 12 cores but one core only working on that okay but when you go with this here what is happening all the co all the processors are coming into scenario they are trying to print okay whether any such provision to be have in this let us see so here go with the environment dot Okay, current processor, anything like that do we have? We don't have that information here in this. Okay, which processor is using? We don't have any idea in that. But try to print even the, like here, one we take, then followed by here, come to this point, then it is environment. Okay, then dot here, followed by, current manager thread id we use it's int so same thing we try to use here here also we use same thing so what difference we get between them let us see in this okay so here in this area we try to take this and try to see what this is going to print for us. Okay, run and see what is the difference you have we can find in that. Can you see here for all of them we have only one. Are you seeing here 10 comma 1, 45 comma 1, 67 comma 1, 33 comma 1 like this for all of them we have only one but when you go with the parallel computing it's giving here 33 8 99 8 12 8 59 8 9 8 17 8 so like this this is actually printing for us okay for 10 this is one for 67 4 it is for 11 4 for 3 also 4 for 6 also 4 it is for 2 also 4 so like this what is happening different ids we are getting in this when you go with the parallel computing okay but when you go here with a like just for each loop what is happening it is always printing only one it is always printing only one so what we do here we just try to uh, delete this part we don't print actually milliseconds in this and here also we don't print any millisecond now that would be good in fact if you remove here printing a milliseconds that would be good here here also we print only we print th those things 
Okay. So it is current managed thread ID. With the help of that, we can say here. So in this case, one and only one thread is working on this. But when you go with this here, different threads are coming in the scenario. scenario. 10 comma 1, 99 comma 1, 12 comma 1, 89 comma 1, but 43 it's 9, 17 is 9, 23 is 9. So like this what is happening, you get actually here different IDs for it. So this is basically parallel computing. Okay, all the processors are coming into scenario. Okay, so whenever, I mean, a processor is free, it is automatically coming into scene and it is actually picking the data and processing it. So like this, this is called as here, parallel computing. So using parallel computing concept, we can actually make application performing much better. Okay, application is going to be performing much better here. In the parallel computing, you have multiple controls, but one and only one data. Data is going to be same, but you have number of con number of controls. A control is nothing but here, CPU, you can think that way. Okay, CPU, is one control like that. So you have total 12 CPUs in this. That is called as 12 core. Okay, that's called as actually 12 core. So 12 cores, they are going to be working when you go with the parallel computing. Okay, so whenever you have actually data intensive applications, you can use this concept with the help of that you can distribute the work among the number of like processors. Okay, you can, I mean, give data among the number of processors. So parallel computing these days actually very, very important for us. And here with the help of the current managed thread ID, So it is always we are getting a unique name. Okay, it's actually a unique name. So parallelly, it's working here. So different processor is coming into scenario and it's going to execute. So here one and only one thread, that's only working here, but a different process can start different thread with that, it can work actually. Okay, so like this, what is happening? We are using the parallel dot for each. So using parallel dot for each, we are iterating over the collection, depending on the availability of the processor that comes into scene and it's going to be performing the required task. Okay, so this is going to be quite fast when compared with this one. When you compare with for each, this for parallel dot for each is going to be quite fast. So this is also going, this is also working on the data, same collections, here also in the arrays, here also in the arrays or collections. But what is happening here? Different processor, processor actually processing the given data, but here only single processor is going to be working or single uh, CPU is going to be working or single core is going to be working when you go with the for each. So this is the difference between the for each and parallel dot for each. So this comes under parallel computing. Okay, so this is about actually for each and other one is here related to parallel dot for each.